good morning, everyone. Thank you for inviting me today. Um, this morning, I'm going to speak uh, about uh, our journey that we did in Striker, and uh, we have chosen this title. It was uh, an evolution, not a revolution. Why? Because uh, we wanted to keep uh, the core of our foundation and leveraging talent while having a disruptive uh, success. So before going into the presentation, I would like to introduce uh, a little bit Striker. So this is our mission. So together with our customer, we are driven to make healthcare better. And those are our values. Now there is a short video how we are thinking about uh, the vision of Striker. The importance of making healthcare better is why we all work here. You wake up every morning with a purpose, knowing that you have the opportunity to change somebody's life. We could sell anything, we're all sales reps, so we choose healthcare because we know that we can impact a patient's life by partnering with a surgeon. Striker Trauma and Extremity salespeople have a passion for helping their customers deliver the best possible outcome for their patients. This awareness that we're helping rebuild lives is in the DNA of Striker Trauma. I always try to think about what I can do to enhance my surgeon's ability to rebuild a life. Whatever it takes to give them the best product and the best support that they can have in the critical moments when they are treating their trauma patient. In some of the worst times in patients' lives, we get to be part of the team that help rebuild their lives. We are there for our customers and for our patients 24-7. One of the cool things about being an orthopedic trauma surgeon is that you get to impact people's lives at a really critical time. You can watch them evolve and, and heal and recuperate and uh, return to full form and function um, and kind of reclaim their, their lifestyle back. Ultimately, it's a surgeon who rebuilds lives, but it's our duty to make sure we support them the best we can. And that is by creating an environment, providing them with the best services and products available. So when they enter the OR, they only need to focus on one thing, the patient. So ultimately is the surgeon that is rebuilding lives, but as a striker, we really want to help him to, to make the best for the patients. And we want also to anticipate needs to help them to be really at the forefront. That's why we saw a link also on the challenger and we did into our journey. And our journey, as you can see, we started in 2017 at the end. So everyone read the book, that was the first step. We did this in each country. So I'm in charge of Italy as a general manager, but I'm also in the leadership team in Europe. That's why we started before locally, but then we gathered together as a leadership team and we started in part with the CAB and Garder to, uh, let's say, to have a vision and to set the success criteria starting from uh, a European level. Then uh, we, uh, we build uh, the education and the training of all the striker organization at the European level, and then we cascade locally, because it was also important to customize in each country the, the message of the challenger. And at the end, uh, we want uh, strictly to monitor success, uh, and uh, then we will see what we have achieved so far. The next step, uh, when we have done uh, on the sales perspective, we are moving also on the marketing side uh, to apply the challenger. Our objective is, uh, there are three mainly. The first one uh, is uh, we want as a trauma extremities organization in Europe uh, to, be, uh, to become number one in 2020. So we want to really sustainable uh, grow that will be double the market grow that we are having. The second thing is to have a more agile sales force uh, to be much more at the forefront and to anticipate the needs from the customer. And the third one uh, is uh, that we are now really have uh, a strict look at the work-life balance of our people. Just you know that uh, all the sales uh, trauma people in Europe, uh, they are available for our customers 24-7, uh, so all the day, on the night, because of the critical patient that uh, they are really need to be there also in the OR. So we know that, uh, what are the customer trends and needs? We know that today the customer are grouping together and because they want to have much more volume, but also they want to reduce the number of suppliers. The second trend is that more and more there are these big tenders, for example, there are regional tenders, they are lasting from 
three to seven years. So that's why we need to anticipate it to prepare better before the tender its, uh, its issue. And the third one is the customer is uh, demanding uh, a full portfolio, so qualitative good portfolio, and also concepts that are going beyond the product. But more and more tomorrow, they are asking to have uh, economic, health economic data. We know that they are coming MDA regulatory, that there is a law, that it's uh, when we are launching a new product, they are asking to have data to support the launch. And also they are asking to become in partner, real partner with them, enabling a potential efficiency inside the hospital. So to help them to share also profit and also to have just in time supplier or managing better the services that we are providing to them. So what we have done in Striker, we were really aware how our sales force was really good in servicing. So they are very good in staying the OR, to stay close with our customer. Uh, so we were focused in 2015 on the product segmentation. This means that we were focused on the brands, so we were able to increase our growth on the brand segment. But then we felt the urgency to move from a servicing model to a, 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 an acquiring model, so from uh, farmers to hunters. That's why in 2018 we were focused on uh, our segmentation, much more on the customer side. And we had uh, divided our sales force into two. So the first one is uh, the convert people, that they are the, the farmers, but then we moved immediately on the acquire. So the one that they are able to open new customers. So we did that in our journey, starting at the end of 2017, and now we have quite close on the sales perspective, and we are moving on the marketing side. So now we want also to target the marketing going into this process. So that we wanted our design principle, we want to keep our goal that is to really have a sales grow double of the market. And we want to focus and leveraging on our talents. So we are very good in, in these services part. So we want to keep the convert sales people that we are calling sales rep on the existing customers. Existing customers for us are the customers that where we have more than 30% market share. While we, are, we were uh, uh, creating a new role for the acquire sales people. Acquire sales people that we have this new name that is a sales partner, that they are really focusing on opening new doors, opening new customer. This means customers that are a market share below 30%. So we uh, define also the new role of the sales department in partnership with Gallup. Gallup is uh, our consultant for the new hiring. And for doing that, uh, we formulate a, 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 a form for making the interview, um, including new questions. A new questions that are much more on constructive tension, how much the people uh, is willing to have a challenger discussion with the customer. And that's why we make uh, all the assessment in our salespeople in Europe to better understand who is much more the strength on the acquiring and who is much more on the converting. That was quite, uh, quite interesting because also we went through a process of thinking who is uh, the best. It was the best salesperson that is uh, converting, so upselling, or is the best one that is opening your account. At the end, the conclusion is that both people are the same value for the organization. So if it's a convert person, it's bringing one million more with existing customer or one million more in new customer for us, it's the same value for the organization. That for us was a very good also for the messaging that we had to deliver to the people. Because also we were in doubt how to deliver these messages. We didn't want to be tough in doing that because uh, we really want as a striker, as a culture, to leverage in our talents that we have a lot. So 
uh, for sure uh, they have uh, the same value, but uh, they will be trained differently because on the convert, uh, they have uh, one training, while on the sales partner, so the acquired people, they went through the challenge of sales model because also for the, the new account. And so we develop, developed uh, all the training around that, uh, all the sales partner went through, and uh, the training were really based on the insights. We know that uh, the challenger selling approach uh, is really on uh, how make uh, the customer see the opportunity they, they are not evaluating. So our people, they really need to make them see an opportunity or they are losing an opportunity if they are not acting immediately. That's why the, really the story of the insight, it's how the sales force, it's really embracing the, the insights and how to build the insight itself. What we have done in Striker is to move out of the product itself or the characteristic, the technical feature of the products and more and more to um, be beyond the product and to target new stakeholders inside the hospital. Meaning that uh, we wanted to leverage uh, something different uh, from the same things that all the competitors are doing uh, and also we before the, the insight. What we have done? We have done that uh, all the sales partners went through a certification, so through a training, and uh, after they were certified, they uh, were pushed to build the insights and to foster a culture where all the, the people that were sharing and building the insights, we make a competition. So in Strike, we are really very good in the competition side because we are all achievers. And so we did this competition and the competition is also some, uh, let's say, award. So the winner received 200 net. And uh, we did uh, two things. The first one was an insight scorecard so all the leadership team and the marketing team were evaluating all the insights coming from Europe, from the sales partner. And then all the insights that won were introduced in our Challenger Insight Library. That was the example, or it's quite complicated, but there is an example of the insight scorecard where we were scoring all the insights that were coming from from the, the field, and then uh, these are uh, the insight library. So all the insights were tracked in our insight library, and uh, with the full message, uh, we pitched the desk uh, with, with the supported documents, uh, and all the sales force uh, were able to leverage uh, and to consult uh, the insight library to, to share uh, among, uh, among them. After having done that, uh, we uh, tackled some very good insights uh, and also we focused uh, what was the message before the insight and before the challenger. So before that, uh, we were much more focused on the product, so the product was the protagonist. The, here are an example uh, of uh, systems that uh, are able to enable the surgeon to standardize uh, the procedure is a navigation system to how to implant a femoral nail. Uh, so, but if you can see here, one of the two, it's our product. But if you look, also if you are not an expert, you see the similarity. So we were uh, counting and describing only the technical feature. And so in this extent, we were, let's say, compete in the same marketplace. There are no differences. Everyone has a strength and everyone has an advantage of this system. What we have done, so we moved away from this approach and we wanted to count much more on the insight, a disruptive insight. So we, we were keeping the, for example, here, the hospital priorities based on the, the product that you have seen before, so this navigation system. This navigation system is allowing the surgeon to standardize this procedure and is also helping the new generation to have a step-by-step -step approach to make the surgery with less variability. Also, the focus of this product was to decrease the X-ray exposure in the hospital. 
So I'm saying that because we were uh, counting and focusing on the saving time, improving efficiency, reducing cost, which we were already focused on. But uh, we make uh, a step forward. So now we were counting on the health and well-being, not only on the patients, because the patient, the centric of the patient, is our core in Striker, but also we want to make the customer thinking of their staff. So also on the surgeons and the, the people that they are working in the OR. So we started to, to make this kind of, uh, of picture and slides. So did you know the consequences of X-ray exposure? And the consequences uh, are really huge because there are uh, plenty of literature that they are underlined how the 10% of total cancers may be induced by X-ray radiation. Also, there are 5.3% more the cancer affected the orthopedic surgeon because they are using a lot of X-ray. And also for women, unfortunately, is the 2.9% increasing on the prevalence of, on the breast cancers. So we were able to tackle and to make on the feeling of the C-suites, for, for example, and also the surgeons because the surgeons say, okay, so now you can have the same feature, the technical feature of the other competitors, but here you are uh, teaching me something different that uh, I didn't evaluate so far. So we, uh, did you know that up to 21% of radiation can be avoided? And so what if, uh, if you could reduce the risk of your patients because you are decreasing the variability, is much more a standardized surgery, but also you are taking care of your staff. And this was also a kind of retention. So probably we were applying what we are doing in our companies, because in the private companies, in the industry, we are taking care of our, of our employees. The hospital probably, they are not used to thinking. So that's why we count on reducing variability, decreased complication, X-ray exposure, but also to improve outcome, outcome as well-being. So this was a completely different approach. So our journey, so we went through, we read the book, we went through, we defined the criteria, we had the training, we count on the insights, and uh, then uh, with the campaign, we were really disruptive in this campaign, but then we really wanted to measure success. So the return on investment as a salesperson is the most important part. So uh, what we have done is that the first was a survey, so to, to have the level of satisfaction to understand, and we asked all Europe, to the surgeon, we asked the hospital administration and nurses, and uh, the, we found out that if you see the last two was the, on the servicing side. On the servicing side, we knew already that we were very good in say with this customer and we'd be supporting them. In fact, uh, you know the answer is more than 90% that they were very satisfied. But what's the outcome uh, on the challenger was the first three. So we wanted to understand if uh, what we have done so far was really well perceived uh, from our customers. So we asked, for example, if uh, we were able to offer innovative solutions, if uh, we are partnering with them, if uh, we are really providing insightfulness and meaningful discussion. And the result was really exceptional because we have seen that uh, the score was 80% uh, uh, and, uh, and above. So that was a success that we are measuring so far on the survey. We also ask them how likely is that you recommend the strike at trauma and extremities to a friend or colleagues. And so we see here uh, that uh, it's, it was a good response. So across 50%, uh, uh, they say yes. And also Italy is the leading, just you to underline, is 60% in all the, the region. And also it was a really a good success. The average AU rating was 8.5 out of 10. So the promoters, and they are extremely light to recommend the striker, was really high. So after having done uh, this uh, pathway in this year, we really want to underline that uh, we, we try to, to really have uh, the answer from our customer, and they say yes. 
But we did more, of course, because as a third person, so we want to also to understand if uh, also from the growth perspective, we are now on the right track. You see the first graph is uh, the market grow, is uh, the dark line, and the gold one is striker how is, uh, is uh, really growing. And you see the divarication of the two lines starting in uh, Q2 2018. So we were really able to have uh, a consistent grow all Europe, uh, and also in each country, we are uh, also uh, considering the difference in growth on the sales rep. Sales rep is the converting uh, people, so upselling, and the sales partner. And you see it's a double digit, double digits in both uh, categories. So this for us uh, is uh, the most important uh, success uh, story because the return on investment is, is there. So after uh, finishing uh, this uh, journey on the sales people, now we want to go further. And so we want to tackle uh, and to think about our marketing people. Because uh, what we have, uh, we thought uh, is uh, to start before on the sales people because uh, they are the one, they are they're much more skeptical usually in the organization while the marketing uh, usually are much more, uh, sorry for the sales people, but I am also the sales person, so I know that we are skeptical, but we measure the success. So now we are going to the, to the marketing because we want also them to be on the insights, uh, insights part. So we wanted to keep uh, our, uh, our goal, becoming number one in 2020, and we was also to generate in demand, to anticipate the need, instead to asking the customer, what do you need? We want them to go there and to think about their business and to make them act and feel the, the urgency to do something different for their business, not to lose the opportunity. So again, here with our evolution, the design principle is the same, but we want to split the marketing into two. So the first one is based on product, and the second part is on the value service marketing, with the value proposition that is the link of the two parts. So here there are the two categories, so on the brand, and on the service, so, but both of the, the department, they need to go beyond the product itself. So not thinking about the technical feature, but counting on, for example, so leveraging the R&D or literature, and on the service side to the value-based healthcare. The insights will be the link of the two, the two um, department. It's a process that is ongoing, so we have just started, but we are leveraging the experience that we have done with the, the sales force. And now that uh, I would like to uh, show you what the, we have done on the Italian Bay. You know that Italy, it somehow is uh, something uh, different from the other countries because uh, again, because uh, we do have uh, not only internal employee, but we have a networking of agents and dealers. So it is difficult with the agent and dealer because they are uh, outside the company to bring them on board and to let uh, uh, really stay, uh, stick with our, with our strategy. So what do we have done? The first, uh, uh, have we done the European level? We cascade in Italy. And so the first one was the implementation on the sales partner. In Italy, we did have product specialist. So product specialist means people that they are going in the OR every day to support the operation of the customer. So every day, also the weekend, they are there to support the customer. But the internal people, uh, we were assess them if they really have uh, the, the skills, uh, the knowledge or the characteristics to be a challenger. Uh, so, and uh, almost all of them, luckily, in, in Italy, were able to go through the training and to become a sales partner. Then we defined uh, the role and responsibility of our agents that for us are the indirect sales rep. 
So the one that uh, they are uh, supposed to upselling, so to stay with the, with the customer and uh, to retain and to servicing. So we started to have uh, an awareness campaign on the challenger in all the agents, but also we did uh, a assessment on the agent side, so there were a reorganization because we wanted to be sure that they are partnering with us. So we ask them to hire new sub-agents with them to be able to stay in the OR more and more on the daily activities. To do that, uh, you know, that it was not so easy because agents are really focused on their commissions. So agents, uh, they don't have a salary. They have a commissions based on the, the sales, uh, the revenue they are providing. So asking them to hire new people, of course, the first question is, okay, you are giving me three points more. And say no, because uh, we have another, uh, another approach now that we are going to explain to you. And uh, also we wanted to foster collaboration among a sales partner and, uh, and agents. And now we are uh, doing another step uh, that uh, we want to move uh, in some regions in Italy from agents to have uh, an internal uh, sales rep. So not outsourcing, but try to have much more control on our sales people. So what we have done, uh, that is uh, convincing them uh, to have uh, more people hired uh, from the sales rep, so uh, agents uh, was quite difficult, but uh, uh, we were able to convince them uh, that uh, if uh, we free up time to the sales partner to be able to have uh, more insights, uh, helping also them uh, to sell more, that could be the win-win. So they trust us. So in, uh, in 2019, because we start in 2018, we will have 14 people in addition on the territories that agents have hired to cover the OR, so to service the customers. And uh, that's why so we free up time to the sales part. They are much more you know, focused on the quality part of the job to develop the, the right insights to open the new doors. So the outcome was for the company was huge because we were able to saving across 1 million on our PNL because we were not hiring, but the agents were hiring these people and without impacting so on the, on the marginality and without increasing the commission to agents. And we leverage again our talents because uh, the agents were, are so good uh, in upselling and in servicing and our sales partners are very good uh, in uh, marketing or the insights part. And uh, I have here a concrete example uh, just to better understand uh, what's mean in the collaboration between the sales uh, reps, so the agents and the sales partner. So that uh, was the case. There is a, a very big uh, trauma center, so a big hospital, reference hospital in one region. It's not the only reference hospital in the region, but it's the biggest one. So they are uh, available 24 hours, seven days uh, for OR service for the emergency. So take into account that the trauma um, patients uh, are really patients in a critical time. They are really with all the comor comorbidities uh, and all the fractures. So, uh, the wrong assumption that the hospital have uh, is that uh, they can keep uh, their status or hub. So hub is spoke, hub is a reference center, spokes are the small hospital in the territory that they are referring uh, the patients uh, to, to the hub. And so they, they didn't think about the fact that uh, the patients, uh, the referring patient was going down. And they didn't think the risk that they can lose also the status because the patients that they come to the hospital were not well stabilized. Stabilized means that the spokes, the small hospital, were not able to really well manage the, the patient. So they were at risk. The insights was we were out completely with the external fixation. It's a, it's a product that is stabilizing the patient. So we were able through the insights, that was the first insight that win uh, in, in Europe. So we were able to make them see that, that they are uh, really at risk 
to lose their status and also because they were not uh, receiving uh, good uh, stabilized patient. So they were starting to think, uh, the first reaction was, uh, come on, you are teaching me what I'm doing my job. But at the end, uh, they realized that probably to go through a proper education program. So Stryker was able to, first of all, uh, to teach uh, the spokes, the small hospital, how to better manage the patient at the right time, at the right moment, uh, and to the right uh, reference center. Uh, secondly, we went uh, in the big uh, hub. We spoke uh, with the C-suite because also if you are uh, having uh, uh, less patients, uh, not well stabilized, uh, there were a legal risk uh, that they are occurring. So in this, uh, in this uh, we, we built uh, this program uh, and we were able to put in touch spokes and hub. Uh, and now at, after one year, not only the sales are becoming to grow fast, uh, but also they are very happy because uh, we positioning ourselves and our sales people uh, as a consultant not anymore as a simple sales uh, that is uh, want to push the product, uh, but really we consult them uh, to see the risk uh, that they, they didn't realize before. So that's what really uh, the sales part uh, developed the insights with the input with the indirect uh, sales channel, but they were together. So now the agents are very happy because of course uh, they are day to day there to help, uh, but they are also gaining uh, uh, the revenue that they were expected. So our, my conclusion is that uh, the journey, our journey was uh, an evolution, not uh, a revolution, because we really wanted to make a, a gradual change while having uh, great results, uh, leveraging our talent, because uh, really in Striker we count a lot on people, uh, we are taking care of people, and uh, we leverage also our, we want to keep our foundation. We were very good in servicing, that was the first part, but it was not enough because if you are only servicing, you are not creating new opportunities. So we want really to go forward and to open the new accounts. So we felt this emergency in part with the CAB, we were able to, to do this journey so far. We parted with the challenge to develop, to develop so this new commercial strategy and uh, we were creating this new role, so the sales partner. And now we are moving also on the marketing side. We measure success and now we are uh, moving, uh, moving forward. Uh, at the beginning, uh, I make you uh, saw that there were three objectives for us. Uh, so becoming number one uh, in uh, 2020, having a more agile sales force, and we achieved that. And also Striker uh, is really now committed to the work-life balance. So uh, each leader, for example, now we, are, we were, uh, um, let's say, creating a movie, a video that we were delivering in our European sales meeting because we wanted to start from us uh, to make the example of our people. Uh, I remember, for example, during our meeting uh, locally, I asked my people, uh, what do you do for wor your work-life balance? Saying that uh, they are in the OR night and day. And they say, nothing, we don't have time. Uh, okay, are you doing sport? No, we don't have time. Are you doing so? They were doing nothing because they felt guilty to do something for themselves. So that was a, a really, to me, was a thinking and say, okay, I need probably to give the example because if I'm traveling extensively, not having time to myself, etc. So as a leadership team in Europe, we think to deliver this message to all the people. And so this is uh, creating a, a, a movie, starting from one of my biggest passion that is watercolor painting. So I, I built this uh, very short video for you just to see what the message was. I'm Isabella Mandelli, the general manager in Italy for trauma and extremity. Today I'm going to share with you what did I do to improve my work-life balance. I'm proud to be part of such a huge community in Striker, committed together with our customer to make healthcare better and to rebuild life. Sometimes uh, my job uh, is uh, a little bit stressful because I have a lot of responsibility and also I have to travel a lot. So I need uh, to be focused uh, on some tips and tricks to expand my energy capacity. And to do that, 
I have done a short list of things that I try to implement daily to improve my work-life balance. So the first one is learn to manage my energy, not my time. And I really start to exercise more, so I start again to play tennis. It was uh, only a, a short one, but uh, just to give this uh, message that for us is very important. And this was my last slide. Thank you very much. Thanks, Hannah. That was really, really interesting. Thank you very much. I work for Baxter Healthcare, so I'm particularly interested <laughs> in what you've done here. Um, one of the things I made a note of was you talked about this insight of the month and the sales uh, partners coming up with their own insights. And then you said about them being developed. Who, so who did they work with? Because we heard earlier that it was really key that marketing worked with sales to develop those insights. But it seems that you're sort of bringing marketing in afterwards. So how did you start that initially? Yeah, so yes, because we starting from the sales people, so the sales part around on the sales. The marketing was uh, helping or facilitating, but they were not involved uh, also in the training. So they were really the sales people that they were developing the insights because they were the one that daily by day they are in the, in the hospital itself. But uh, you're right, because we realized that we needed uh, more and more also to involve the marketing. That's why now we are going to the challenger applying also to the marketing and to have the marketing cooperate efficiency with the sales partner. Could I just do a quick follow-up? Sorry, quick follow-up to that. So with the benefit of hindsight, with the benefit of hindsight, would you have included marketing earlier? Sorry. So knowing what you know now, about developing those insights, would you have brought marketing on board earlier? I don't think so, because uh, I think that uh, to, as I, I told before, uh, including before the salespeople, that they are the much more skeptical on this kind of program, it's uh, really enabled them to really trust uh, in what we are doing, and now they are supporting the marketing. The marketing was involved uh, as a facilitator. So if I have to choose, uh, again, uh, I will go step by step again. So before on the sales uh, and then go into the marketing. Probably the next step uh, is also to involve uh, the, the sales rep. Uh, so the acquiring, uh, because also on the Spencer presentation on the account managing uh, that they are serving. So the, the sales rep, uh, they are only servicing, but probably in the service, uh, we should do something different to boost also the sales uh, in the existing customer. Yeah, I've got a question here. Um, thank you very much for your presentation as well. I'm right at the back. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, I'm also in the medical devices in training. Um, and we heard in the previous presentation about the importance of the sales manager's role um, coaching. So I just wondered what you'd done with the sales managers to support both sales teams in terms of their coaching and their coaching ability. Yeah. So the sales manager is the key person uh, to really deliver the message uh, and... Uh, there was uh, the person that we were really focused on uh, at the beginning because uh, it was uh, the first group that they went through the training because going to the sales partner because they are so crucial and also not only the, the training on Challenger but also on the coaching model. So we are implementing the coaching model for the regional sales manager on the sales partner. Because, uh, and also we are reinforcing now because we are aware that uh, there is a, a, a world uh, to do on that uh, because they are doing the difference. So starting really from the regional sales manager. Thank you very much. The front line manager, yes. Hello, good morning. My name is uh, Eric van Antwerpen, responsible for global sales at uh, Manpower Group. Where are you? I don't see I'm you. I'm sitting I'm here. Sorry, because yes. I just want to um, so you were sharing with us, and, and thanks for sharing your story, um, that you were implementing this across Europe. And I was wondering, implementing, um, implementing this, did you bump into any cultural differences? How did you ensure the proper execution of this, I think, massive uh, change within your organization with all the different countries, 
cultures potentially. Could you share some of that, please? Yeah, no, that's a very interesting question because uh, we did that as European level, but of course the, the differences uh, in the countries are huge. So probably we also discussed yesterday briefly that uh, being in Italy, sometimes the UK or the native uh, are much more, let's say, easy to cascade. When you are in South Europe, Italy or Spain, uh, also I think in, in France, uh, what uh, it, it was diff really quite difficult to cascade. What was good uh, is that we had the principles in all Europe, so the, these three principles, and then we, were, uh, we had the freedom to customize in each country. That was good. The thing that I would do differently probably is to have uh, a much more on the training and the coaching side, uh, much more on the language specific because also the cultural difference uh, among the countries uh, are, uh, are, qu are quite big. So that, that was a uh, part, but as a leader in the country, that we were able to customize and also to change and to be aware also on the vice president that the difference are there. So we are tracking all the differences, but at the, the end, the insights, for example, were, were really something that was uh, common to all Europe. That was uh, the, the biggest learning because then you can customize how differences in the coaching, in the training, locally. But the insights is very important that it uh, needs to be the same. Yeah, hi there, James Crawford. I'm with Bayer in the UK. I'm interested just to follow up on the comment that the lady from Baxter made about these insights, because they were a core part of your presentation. We saw one example around uh, the, the impact of cancer on orthopedic surgeons and the benefit to your product use. Um, I'm interested to know how you kept the generation going over and above this 200 euro incentive because your scorecard is detailed, there's a lot of data in there about financial impact and so on. So these appear to be quite meaty insights that are being generated. How did you keep that going over a period of time, please? Yeah, this is another <laughs> interesting question because um, all the six partners went through the training and then uh, they had the three months to develop the insights. The insights were captured in the scorecard, there were a winner, and then in the library. So all the sales partner, uh, they have these three months. So now we have gathered all the insights of the beginning of the training. Now we are doing something different, meaning that each country, they are uh, implementing the insights. So before uh, the big insights, uh, because uh, if you see the campaign on the cancer, we were leveraged on one insights. So, and the marketing uh, built that. So now we have uh, more than 100 insights in the library, so that it's huge. But we now started to cascade locally because it's important that all the specific of the countries. Uh, so we are leading uh, as a general manager in each country. So, Asking the, um, the question is that uh, we did that only the three, four months after the training and after the certification. Hi, Isabella, at the back here. Um, I'm interested to find out, a, kind of a follow-on question um, about the insight, really. Finding insights is great, and educating the customer is all very well, but how did you make sure that this was true commercial insight that only led to Striker? rather than just educating the rest of the market in doing insight. So do you mean also the other companies uh, that they yes, can do that? Yes, yeah. so how did you make sure it was, you got the, the sole benefit of it rather than your competitors as well? Yeah, of course the benefit uh, will be for everyone, also for the competitors, so, but we are leading that. So we were able uh, to have the partnership with the hospital, so probably also the other competitor with the, say, with the product that is similar to us, uh, they can level, but uh, we move uh, really fast, so it's an implementation of two years, uh, and uh, we were able to go to the C-suites uh, to leverage uh, more our technical skills that are in line with the decreasing of radiation. So the insights was uh, on the cancer that you mentioned, but also linked to our specific technical skills that are much better on the competitors. So it's linked together. That was the, the, trick, the tips and tricks. Hi, Richard with uh, Go Implants, uh, part of uh, Link Orthopedics. Um, 
you said you were able to get your agents to increase the amount of uh, employees or a number of agents uh, covering the, the market. Uh, I, I didn't understand how this uh, plays into the challenger concept and, uh, and, and also how did you convince them to do that and, and how did you show the benefit? Yeah, so uh, it was uh, a pathway that lasts for one year and a half. So before uh, we, mm, we secure that our challenger inside the, the, our company, so the sales partner, uh, they were in the right place. After that, uh, we started an awareness campaign on the agents. They were reluctant to, to, you know, to be part of this because you know, that the agents, uh, they want only revenue, they don't, they don't care about what's happening also in, inside the company. The, what we have done that worked very well, it's, uh, first of all, uh, we also reorganize and restructuring. So the under, I didn't put here, but the underperforming uh, agents, uh, they were terminated in this extent because uh, there were agents in the company since uh, 30 years, 35 years. So it's something that were really not going in the same way we don't want it to change. That was uh, um, the first step. The second step with our partners, so the one uh, that uh, stay in the company with our partner, we make sure that they understand uh, that if we are asking them to hire people without increasing commission, because historically, when you are asking to do something different to the agent, they're asking more and more. That is uh, the trend, uh, who, who knows uh, the agent's uh, part. So we were able to say, if you, you are much more covering uh, the territory, we are able uh, to support you in selling more. So we are not uh, giving you more commission, but uh, we measure that. So we were able to, uh, to be partner in the first year. So for the first year, we were sharing the cost, meaning that we are giving them 1% commission only for one year, for some agents. After with the goal and the, the, of course the, the target, the sales part develop the insights. After one year, we see the result. If they were able to get the results, they are keeping this 1%, but uh, in the second year we are coming back to the minus. If they are not able to get the target, we are creating not. So we are asking to give him back the money. So this was uh, a sharing and a challenging also them. At the end, all the agents uh, that uh, was hiring the new uh, people, uh, they got uh, the results. So no one had to give him back the money and then uh, they are really increasing their sales. So it was a win-win and we challenged back each other and we want to measure each other. That was uh, the, the key. Hi, Isabella, I'm Stuart Kiernan, Head of Product Marketing at SKF Group. Uh, we're somewhat down the path on developing challenger approach in our sales organization and uh, we've already accumulated quite a few insights along the way. My question is related to how you validated the insights because quite often we found that we're stepping into areas of expertise that aren't our core expertise and how do we, you know, we've, we find it a bit of a challenge to validate what we come up with so that it comes across as credible with uh, our customers. And the second question is, did you ever consider using external subject matter experts to help develop insights that would support your business? Yeah, so for example, the, we, we had to assess, uh, assess, let's say, the people, if they do have the right skills and the knowledge. Of course, if we apply this methodology, we, um, let's say, make sure that they had the attitude because uh, we develop, uh, you, you know, the, the knowledge and the skills uh, to be able for our sales force uh, to go in the insights. So it was much more on the attitude and uh, to be a constructive tension, for example, to refrain and to challenge a little bit, a bit our customer. That's why with the Gallup, that it's uh, when someone is hiring the company, they need to go with this uh, test assessment, let's say. And during the interview, we make sure that uh, there are some questions uh, really understanding if the people that we are hiring, uh, they do have this attitude to build uh, and to be on the challenger side. 
with the old people, the old people, the people that are already in the company, they were uh, a little bit different because, uh, for example, in Italy, we had the two product specialists that they were not challenger completely. That's why in agreement with them, we moved them uh, to the agents. And now they are happy because they were really uncomfortable to create tension or to challenge the customer. That was uh, also in Europe, something that we have done uh, and that was uh, a little bit tough also to manage people that were not the attitude to do. But at the end, um, you know that the territories, uh, there are someone uh, in Europe in speaking, they are sales partner, but in the sales territory, there is also the sales rep. So they are uh, sharing the territories, the one opening and the other one taking uh, the hospital to, to the upselling side. 